Welcome back everyone. As you can see in front of me, I have a Mark 8 Golf R. So this video is all about the development process of the intake for the Golf R and the GTI together. In this video, we're gonna be looking at the stock system. I'm gonna remove it, we'll 3D scan the area, look at the actual scan data, then develop the design, 3D prototype the design and fit the prototype system. So first things first, let's look at the stock intake on the Mark 8 Golf R. Okay, so the stock Mark 8 Golf R system, very, very similar to the previous Mark 7. That's because the engine's pretty much the same. It's a very slight revision. Um, the difference between the R and the GTI is the turbo. So that rear tube section is different between the Golf R and the GTI. So uh, well, another thing to notice, of course, there's no VW logos anywhere to be seen. Normally you have a VW logo on the engine cover, but this is... Uh, looks like a very generic foam kind of cover. And I think we'll have to do something about that because it is very bland looking. So let's look at the stock intake. We've got a front duct, which obviously the airbox pulls air in from. Um, the duct is blank on this side. There is no opening on this side. So it pulls the air in from the left side. So the air has to come in, go around the duct, and then through into the bottom of the stock airbox. And then very, very similar to the previous generation, there is a rectangular uh, filter element in there, which is very cuboid or square in nature. You've got these sharp corners. Airflow goes into the bottom of the airbox, up through that fil panel filter, and then out into the, into the tube. So you've got a good 90 degree turn to the bottom, then another 90 degree turn out of the filter into the tube. Finally, you've got this corrugated tube section which allows some movement with the engine and that goes straight into the turbo inlet. Not much more to say really apart from the fact that that tube does look like it's small in diameter which we're going to have a look at and then the duct system isn't the most optimal for airflow. A lot of turns and uh, corners to negotiate for the airflow. So. Let's remove the stock box now, and then we'll have a look at the space we've got available. Okay, I've removed the stock intake. Let's have a quick look at the space that's available now. So obviously from the front, we've got two entries possible for the duct area, which we'll make use of. Um, nice bit of space where the airbox was, because it's quite a deep airbox, so can make good use of that. Then you've got a narrow channel between the battery and the engine for the intake tube. There's also on the Golf R this uh, pipe, which I, I believe it's a diverter valve system. So that needs to be plumbed in. Um, and then the turbo itself. So on the Golf R, uh, as compared to the GTI, it's a larger turbo. And that turbo inlet, the black piece you see there, is bolted directly onto the turbo. There's no real need to change that. It's a very short piece and it's quite smooth. Mates up nicely with the inside of the turbo inlet. So we'll leave this in place and we'll go from there onwards. One thing I do need to take into account is on left-hand drive cars, the brake fluid reservoir, which for us on this side, is actually over here, right next to the battery. So we need to make sure that when we make our tubing system, it does have clearance for left-hand drive cars with the brake fluid reservoir. Okay, so that's the overview of the space available. I'm now gonna start 3D scanning the system and then we'll look at the scan data afterwards. With the 3D scanning done, which is a very invaluable part of the whole design process. It gives us a very accurate representation of the geometry and the mounting positions within the car. That's done. 
and gives us the envelope within which to design. This is the stock system which has been removed from the car. It's, we just put it together as it is in the car. So as we showed you previously, the front duct, you can see the section closest to the airbox is actually blanked off. So the airbox is drawing air room from the other side. So the airflow is having to negotiate all the way across this narrow duct region down into the airbox. I'm going to remove this duct from the airbox. The airbox is essentially just pulling air in from that opening on the duct and that's coming from all the way to the other side of the duct area. And the other thing to note as well on the duct is this flap. So when the car's in motion, just the, the flow of the air coming in from the front of the car would open this up partially. So majority of that cold air will be flowing straight through the duct and into the engine area. So the stock airbox is actually pulling air in from both the engine area and front. So it's not optimal in the least. So that's the front duct. Moving on to the airbox itself. So you can see the opening there. So the, the airflow is going down into the bottom of the airbox. And then it has to then go up 90 degrees through the panel filter, which is sitting in this region. Once it does that, it then has to negotiate its way through into the back of the airbox through this tube. And if I just remove this, that's where the flow exits from the stock airbox. It's not a, a large opening there. I'll get the vernier in a second and measure that for you. But once that's out of the airbox, it then has to move through this tube section, which allows flexibility with the engine. Obviously that creates its own issues internally because you've got ridges inside which can cause turbulence as the flow moves through that section. Um, and then that directly sits on the turbo inlet on this side. And again, the diameter of this is relatively small with regards to the power the engine's making. Now, they may not be such a huge issue in stock form, but as soon as that car's tuned, this will become a restriction. So that's the tube. Um, we'll now go upstairs, have a look at the scan data and show you how that looks digitally and give you an idea of what we're going to do next with the design. We've just analysed the stock airbox in the Golf. We've obviously scanned the geometry and the available space. I've got in front of me the scan data and all the meshes put together. Let's have a look at the space available and see how much volume there is available to improve on the stock design. In front of me is the assembly of all the meshes put together. And we've got the, the front area here where the duct sits in. As you can see the strut brace there which I've highlighted in blue which lies across the duct. Um, then we've got the engine cover. So we've just scanned a small area of the engine cover which is what we're interested in. There's no point scanning the whole thing. We've then got the battery area, so that's the battery. And down here you've got the mounting points available with the bolt which we used previously in the Mark 7 intake to secure the bracket to. Uh, then you've got this stock tube with the flexible section in the middle going down to the orange coloured inlet which is actually the turbo inlet itself. So this is the Golf R scan and you can see that turbo inlet then secures onto the turbo itself so that blue area which I've highlighted is now the stock turbo itself. I'm going to pull up the scan of the underside of the bonnet to show you how much space there is between the underside of that bonnet or hood and the engine bay. So as you can see now, that top layer is the underside of the bonnet. And there is a bit of space available there for enlarging the intake without worrying about any parts hitting onto the bonnet as the engine moves. So I think we'll try and make use of that space. It's not a huge amount, but it's enough to allow us for a bit more movement. 
it's always useful to scan the underside of the bonnet so that we have an option uh, to enlarge the diameters and make use of available space if needed. So let me just hide that again. Okay, I'm going to get rid of the inlet stock tube. Okay, so that's our envelope now within which to design in. So we've got front area, you can see the two mounting points, one here and on the other point over there. So we'll design something to fit into that whole area for a duct, which will then go to the filter housing, which will sit into this area where the stock airbox was. And then we'll use this channel, this sort of um, channel of space between the airbox and the turbo inlet for our tubing system. And I think there's enough scope here to increase the volumes of every component we can. Right, that's a brief overview of the mesh for the stock system and the uh, available space we have. We'll now look at the design itself and see where we are with the development of the actual design of the Venturi. So having developed the design over the last few months, I'm now going to show you the final design of the Golf R and Golf GTI intake system. We'll go from the turbo forwards and we'll do it component by component so I can explain um, what it looks like and why we did it the way we did it. So looking at the scan again, I'm going to pull up the connector, which is made from silicon, to the turbo inlet itself. So this replaces the stock flexible plastic tube. This yellow piece is the Golf R silicon hose and you can see there's a, a second branch coming off there. So you've got the the part which sits onto the turbo inlet. So this secures directly onto the stock turbo inlet onto the Golf R, which is actually a nice piece. There's no point changing that. It's very smooth, it's very short and it's large enough in diameter to not make a difference um, if we were to change it. So we go onto there and then you've got a smooth curve upwards around the back of the engine and the engine cover and then pointing forwards. Now you'll notice this finishes much sooner than the stock tube and the reason for that was partly aesthetic because I didn't want to have a huge silicon tube coming down all the way in the engine bay. I'd rather have a longer carbon section from the housing and a shorter silicon section just for aesthetic purposes. So I'm going to also bring up the stock tube to show you the difference in uh, diameters. That's the stock tube and you can see how much further back our silicon finishes as compared to the stock one. And you can also see the diameter of that one. It's, it's much larger than the stock tube. So the difference between our silicon and the stock flexible plastic in, intake tube um, it's quite big because our one has an internal diameter of 94 millimeters versus the stock tube which has an internal diameter of 73 millimeters and in terms of cross-sectional area that's actually a 64 percent increase in cross-sectional area as compared to the stock one which allows for a lot more airflow especially on tuned cars. Before I move on I'm going to bring up the other silicon we made for the GTI applications and the GTI is different because the turbo is different and the turbo inlet is different. The orange part again is the Golf R turbo inlet and I'm going to bring up the GTI turbo inlet and overlay them together. So that grey one now is the Golf GTI turbo inlet and you can see it sits at a much different location and it's actually much smaller as compared to the Golf R inlet because the turbo is different. So with that in mind, our GTI hose is that one. So that's our GTI hose. It finishes in the same place as our Golf R hose, but obviously has a different route and obviously sits on the GTI turbo inlet. And the difference is the same in terms of cross-sectional area. Our GTI hose 
is the same as the Golf R hose in terms of diameter at the opening and has the same increase in diameter over the stock version. There's the filter housing. So as I explained, we have extended the filter housing back uh, much further as compared to the stock system where the stock airbox ends and the stock plastic flexible tube begins. We've got rid of that and extended the carbon housing much further back. So this entire housing here, which you can see in uh, a yellow gold color, is actually going to be carbon fiber. And that extends quite far back into the engine bay, which is going to have a very nice um, aesthetic touch. Looking at the housing itself, we have maximized on the volume of the housing. So we've made a lot of use of that space in the engine bay. I'll show you the space left now um, between that filter housing and the underside of the bonnet, just to show you how much space we've actually used. So the, that layer is now the underside of the bonnet. And you can see there is clearance, but it's quite close. And we have made as much use as we possibly could have between that filter housing and the underside of the bonnet. So this filter housing is using a new filter which we developed very recently, especially for the upcoming G80 M3 and also for the Mercedes A45S. So it's a new size filter, we've only just started to use it and it's much larger than the filter we currently use in the Mark 7 intake system. So that filtration area is absolutely huge, it goes a lot quite a way back into that housing and again that's our Venturi system with a reverse mounted cone in there so it's our iconic pod design. One final element of the housing is the bracket system to secure it and I'll show you. So this is the same between the GTI and the Golf R so that housing system is the same between them just the silicon is different so the same filtration area will be for both. So that's now the stainless steel bracket which is laser cut and bent and it secures on to that bolt which is used to secure the battery in place which is the same method as we use for the Mark 7 uh, GTI and Golf and Mark 7 Golf R. Right that's the filter housing done and the final element in this design is the front section which is the duct which is where the filter seals to and draws air in from the front of the car. So the duct now ex extends the entire way across the, the front panel just like our RS3 system does. It's also decoupled from the stock inlets where the slam panel is where, where it actually breathes from so you can see a gap between the duct and that panel there and that allows the duct to be decoupled um, from the two small openings in the slam panel. So it's actually now breathing from those openings as well as the entire way across the slam panel between where that and the bonnet actually closes. So you've got a bit of cold air coming in from that, that bonnet shut. So that area is very cold. It's above and, and in front of the radiator. So you've got, you haven't got any hot air actually coming into that section. And the other thing you might notice is there's a gap between the duct and the filter. Um, I haven't shown you the rubber seal between them, but there is, there is actually a rubber seal between them which compresses and it allows the housing to move with the engine whilst keeping that rubber seal intact and so it keeps it nice and airtight. So there's a rubber seal which goes between the duct and the housing. Now that's the system in its entirety. Um, everything's in carbon apart from that silicon tube at the back and it, it does resemble somewhat the RS3 system but it is a complete ground up design as compared to the Mark 7 system. So this is oversized, it's using all the available space, we've de-restricted it wherever we could and basically it allows for a lot more volume and it allows for um, the system to take care of future builds. So when these cars are going to be tuned, when people start using hybrid turbos or, or full turbo builds, this intake 
will cater for much higher flow rates than the stock airbox. So the more this car is tuned, the more this intake will come into its own and benefit those builds. With the design process complete in terms of the geometry and space, um, the final thing to do was to see if to optimize the shape of the housing and the route it took with the interface with the silicon tube as well. So we did a, a safety analysis on the filter housing and the silicon tube together. And I'm gonna move now to a cross section of the housing first before I go to the CFDs. So I've just cut across the assembly and I'm just gonna bring it there to show you a cross section of the entire thing. Right, so that's cutting across the housing, some of the silicon and some of the, the duct area. And you can see, you can visualize the root of the air as it comes in from the front duct, this front area here, it moves into the filter and then there are no sharp turns or corners. The airflow comes straight through that filter element into that reverse mounted uh, section of the, of the pod, which is where our Venturi uh, design comes into play. Airflow then comes around the outside of that filter, converges where this cone section is, which we've designed specifically to allow the airflow to converge um, quickly by creating some uh, forced turbulence around that cone region. So it brings the airflow straight in and then down through the tube section into the silicon. And again, we've kept the curves as smooth as possible all the way down to the turbo. I'm going to get rid of that cross section and I'll show you now the the CFD analysis. We're only analyzing the um, filter housing and the silicon because it's after the filter which is where it's important. I've made the housing and the silicon clear and the first thing I'll bring up now is the flow trajectories. And this is done using um, air with boundary conditions of um, atmospheric pressure at the face of the filter. And then on the outlet here where it connects to the turbo, we've implied um, a flow rate which is pulling the air through the filter. So we're not, we're not pushing air into the system because that's not how it's working. Obviously the turbo is sucking air through the system. So that's what we've put as a boundary condition on the outlet of the filter, or sorry, of the silicon is an outlet flow. So it's now pulling air through the system rather than pushing it, which is obviously a false um, boundary condition to imply. So I'm gonna show you the flow trajectories, which is there. Um, Blue denotes, uh, this is velocity by the way, so blue denotes lower velocity and as it goes to green and red, those are higher velocities. So the important thing to note here is the uniformity of those colours and of course the uniform, uniformity of the actual flow path itself. Um, there are no swirls, uh, there's no obvious um, turbulence throughout the system. It's nice and smooth. We've got a good velocity profile as it develops from blue, which is a lower velocity where the uh, flow enters a filter and is a larger vo uh, volume. And as that um, housing smoothly tapers down in cross-sectional area, you'd expect the flow rate to increase and the flow then improves and increases in, in its velocity. If this was um, the stock airbox, which is much more cuboid in nature, you'd see a lot of swirls and you'd see a lot more um, blue regions with the stagnation points um, in the stock airbox where the, where the corners are because the flow won't develop uh, smoothly. You'd have a lot of areas in those corners around the stock uh, filter system and you'd see a lot of swirls in those corners before it then um, shows you a more uniform flow rate developing into the higher velocities. And that would usually only be around the middle section of that filter. So it's not being used as effectively as our one is. I'm gonna animate these flow tra tra trajectories, hard to say. 
So there you can see the flow is slow as it comes in through the filter because the area is much larger and then as it then moves in past that cone it converges and you've got a nice smooth transition through that filter into the silicon and importantly as it then floats out into the turbo you've got a nice velocity profile there. One final thing I want to show you is um, a couple of cut plots through the intake. So this is just static um, cut sections through the system to show you the uh, actual streamlines of velocity. Um, it's, it's a bit more detailed, it's better for analysis. So the first one is through the center of the filter itself. So there you can see again blue denotes lower velocities, then green to red and yellow is higher velocities and if I zoom in to the filter section itself um, I mentioned earlier that as the airflow comes through the filter we need it to converge as quickly as possible when it exits the filter and it goes around the outside of the cone so we designed that machined cone which sits on the outside of that filter specifically with that shape which invokes a bit of turbulence around uh, those curves as you can see here with the streamlines and what that does is it actually pulls the airflow back into the center um, of that volume which is important so that it develops further out and gives you a much more even uh, velocity profile as you move away from the filter. We designed this a number of years back but that specifically was done to remove um, a flat surface which then would create a much larger uh, turbulence field which then would take longer for the flow to develop and have a nice velocity profile across the section. That's the filter and you can see the streamlines converge nicely and develop into a much nicer smoother velocity profile as they develop and move into the silicon section and just on the silicon I'm going to show you another cut plot just hide this one. So this is through the center of the silicon itself as it goes into the turbo which is very important. You can see there again it's a nice even flow profile. There is um, a small region of high velocity there which is purely down to the curve of that section of the silicon but on the whole as it exits the silicon you've got a good even balance of velocity and the difference between that green section and the yellow section is literally four meters per second difference so it's on the whole it's very smooth and it's a, it's a very balanced profile across there. Right that's the CFD analysis in a very brief uh, rundown. Um, with that done Next step is to prototype this intake and actually then test fit it into the car and do some performance testing. So with the design process complete, we now have the 3D printed prototypes in front of me. We've got the housing, the duct and the first silicon section. So let's start with the duct. As we showed you upstairs in the CAD We've opened up the duct, so it's all the way across now, the openings across the entire section of the front uh, entry of the, on the top of the bumper. It's also lifted slightly above, so it's de-restricted from those two openings, which we'll show you when we install it. From the duct, so the filter housing sits on this face, and this is an expanding rubber seal. So as the housing moves with the engine, the seal stays intact. So the movement is accounted for with the housing itself. So that ensures that no hot air enters the filter itself. Okay, the filter housing itself. This is one of our latest filter sizes that we've developed. So this is currently being used for the Mercedes A45S and also the upcoming G80 M3. And we've used it in the Golf to maximize on the area within the engine bay. This is being used in our patented Venturi housing system. So you've got the reverse mounted filter, 
with the housing itself, which smoothly tapers down in cross-sectional area to the turbo tube. So there are no sudden changes of geometry. The airflow is very direct, goes straight in from the duct, straight into the filter, comes out of the filter through that housing system and into the tube. So there are no 90 degree turns as there was with the stock airbox. On the exit of that, the actual diameter there is quite a lot bigger than the stock one. So the stock airbox was 72 millimeters in diameter and this is 87 millimeters in diameter. So that 15 millimeters increase in terms of area is actually a 46% increase in cross-sectional area at this point. That then continues on to the silicon. So that silicon sits there onto the housing. So that diameter retains itself in the silicon as far as we can. And that goes all the way down to this end, which goes onto the turbo inlet. That matches the turbo inlet diameter, the stock turbo inlet. And you can see inside that silicon, there's a lip which butts up against the face of the turbo inlet, ensuring a nice smooth flow all the way through. So there's no exposed walls or edges as the airflow goes through into the turbo. The extra branch on that silicon is for the diverter valve system. So that plumbs into here, ensuring that there's nothing uh, disconnected when it's all installed. So that's the silicon. And we've tried to retain that diameter as much as we can and it narrows down just at the end there to get that volume maximized. I'm now going to install this in the car and we'll show you what it looks like once it's installed. Okay, I've fitted the prototype system now. Um, it is a relatively simple kit to fit, which is nice for me because the constant removal and reinstalling is, is a lot more pleasant when the intake is easy to fit. So that's a, that's a plus. Let's have a look at the system. So as we showed you previously, the duct spans across the entire uh, front slam panel and it's completely open now. And it's pulling air in from both sides and also we've de-restricted it from those two openings by lifting it slightly and recessing it away. Now this is something we also did on the Audi RS3 intake which obviously is a lot higher powered and that worked really well because that area is a cold air area because when the bonnet's closed you've still got cold air coming in from between the bonnet and the slam panel so by doing this, we've de-restricted the duct from the stock openings as well. So duct then mates up against the filter housing with this rubber section, which allows movement. So as the engine moves, that seal prevents any opening and keeps it nice and tight from hot air from entering the system. We've got our laser cut bracket, which ties it down to the battery tray area. Housing itself, extends quite a long way back as compared to the Mark 7 intake, which we did, which actually retained the stock hose and ended it around here. So in this one, we've taken that volume back as far as we can, increased it as, far, as much as we can, and your silicon then goes down to the turbo. So it's quite a simple kit to fit. It's a straightforward kit in terms of the way it functions. And the the difference between this, which is the Mark 8 Golf R, and the GTI is just that silicon in the back. The duct and the housing is exactly the same. The attachment is exactly the same. It's just the, the rear silicon because the turbo is different. And I've got both silicons with me. So in my right hand is the Golf R silicon, and this is the GTI silicon. So it's much more simple. Um, doesn't have that extra element attached to it for the diverter valve. And the turbo is actually smaller. So you can see the difference between the Golf R 
and the GTI. GTI has a smaller turbo. And we've still retained the inner lip, so that there's no exposed edges when this fits onto the turbo inlet. So that's it. That's the difference between the GTI and the Golf R. Okay, so the first stage of development is done, and the next stage is performance testing. Now, we can use the 3D printed prototypes for some driving impressions, make sure there's no issues with drivability and so on. And we'll also have a carbon fiber prototype, which we send out for independent testing. And we're partnering up with Awesome GTI and with Regal Autosport to do testing on their own cars, which they have a GTI and a Golf R. They'll be giving us their feedback on fitment and obviously performance data. We'll also look at the carbon fiber system side by side with the stock system, look at the differences, I'll install the carbon system, and then we'll show you what it looks like within the car. So I hope you've enjoyed this first installment. Do join us for the second one, and we'll show you performance and carbon fiber. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you liked the video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please remember to subscribe to the channel and turn your notifications on. If you want to join the conversation, please drop us a comment below and we will do our best to respond to you. And if you're running out of things to watch, why don't you watch one of these two?